Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's Pastor Rod coming to you from Word of Faith Family Church in wonderful Wilmer, Minnesota. Hey, we got some uh, folks here this evening that are I'm blessed to have with me. They're behind the camera, but my mom and dad are here from uh, Oklahoma, and my lovely wife, Annette. Tom is here, and Josh is in the other room uh, doing some things for our youth ministry. So uh, even though the building's not full, there's a lot going on here at Word of Faith Family Church on a Wednesday evening. Hey, turn with me, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53, and I'm going to read from verse 1 down through verse 5. It said, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him smitten, stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 24, of course, says that by his stripes, we were healed. And I like how Brother Hagin used to always say it. If, if you, you were, you is healed. So we is healed in Jesus' name. You know, years ago, this, is, this just came to my mind this afternoon. Now, there was a song that was written by uh, Ron Cannoli, and, and it was just simply called, Whose Report Shall You Believe? And I looked up the lyrics, and it's a powerful song. It says, Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. And it, it, it repeated several times, and it goes, His report says, I am healed. His report says, I am filled. His report says, I am free. His report says, victory. And that report has not changed. And our report of the Lord and our, his provision in our life should not change no matter what's going on around us. And then, then later on in the song, it says, you know, are you healed? And then there's some background singers that yell out, yes. Are you filled? Yes. Have you got the victory? Yes. You know, Smith Wigglesworth said this, and I've quoted this several times. It's worth repeating uh, a million more times. It says, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I am moved only by what I believe. You know, and our confession of faith should be this, that I believe the word of God. The word of God is truth. I shall know the truth and the truth will make me free. Walking in the truth of God's word is walking in victory. Have you got the victory? And you should shout, yes, I do. Praise God. Circumstances don't move me. Needs to be our testimony needs to be our declaration of faith i'm moved only by the, what the word of god says about me praise god second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says for we walk by faith not by sight another quote that uh, by smith wigglesworth is this is that one reason for the trouble in churches today is people's murmuring over the conditions they are in i'm going to repeat that because it bears repeating one reason for the trouble in churches today is people's murmuring over conditions they are in. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 43, do not murmur among yourselves. Now remember in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to read that out of the Amplified. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, I had it marked there, and my marker just flew out right now. <laughs> 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, in the Amplified, it said, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven, and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. You should, you should get up in the morning 
and throughout the day and declare that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Don't allow, and I know this is a soapbox I've been getting on uh, lately, and it's hard to get off because there's so much that is, is purposely coming against our faith. And I believe it's the design of the wicked one, the devil. Don't allow the media to steal your faith. Don't allow the media to steal your joy, power, or love. Don't allow the media to destroy and take away your sound-mindedness. The Bible says that, that our, our minds are to be renewed by the Word of God. And don't let the media try to steal your faith. Your, your faith, yeah, but your health. You know, I read something this morning, and it's kind of interesting how the media works. You know, the Minnesota Department of Health came out with a report on, you know, all we hear about now is COVID, COVID, COVID. I'm so tired of hearing about COVID that, you know, whatever, I, I, I won't, I'll stop it at that. But um, uh, they said this, this was, this was their headline, said that um, uh, test results, positive testing has gone up today. This was yesterday. And then in small print, however, there are no new deaths. <laughs> well, that should be the headline. We should start out with the positive. And then, I'm not saying that the, the truth isn't that the numbers went up, but one thing we need to realize is that testing is going way up too. The only numbers that should count are hospitaliz hospitalization and those that have died specifically from COVID, not with COVID and something else. I'm not preaching on COVID tonight. It's just kind of something that's bugged me a little bit. Today's headlines were this. Two people have died from COVID overnight. And then in small print, however, the numbers are down at their lowest that they've been in a long while. So that's how the media plays it. Throws out the negative and, and, and then just makes little of the positive. But God has not given us a spirit of fear to fear anything. But he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Jesus' name is above every name. That's what a believer has to remember. Amen. The name of Jesus is above COVID-19. It's above heart disease. It's above whatever. COVID-19 must bow its knee to the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't let COVID-19 change what you believe. I'm beginning to hear fear in a lot of, a lot of word attending people. That's what they talk about. They, they adjust their life accordingly. I mean, these are the days that we're living in today that we need a tenacious faith. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And tenacious, I looked it up in the dictionary once again. It means this. It means a holding firmly. We need a holding firmly faith, tenacious faith. It means holds together. That's the only thing that's going to hold us together in the day in which we're living in, and that's faith. It means cohesive. Tenacious means tough, persistent, and stubborn. We should say the word says it, therefore that settles it. You know, I know the saying says, the word says it, I believe it, therefore it, that settles it. No, the word says it, it's settled. The word does not change. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord God, he does not change. It's a don't let go of faith, tenacity. Don't let go of your faith. It's a faith you only obtain and keep by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mark Brzee said this, he said, believing is a result of hearing. Once you hear the word, you have the ability and the capacity to believe it, but you still have to choose what you will believe. I'm gonna say that again. The word that you have, the, once you hear the word, you have the ability and the capacity to believe it but you still have to choose what you believe. I've seen people hear and hear the word, but when the pressure was on, 
They believe their symptoms instead of what the word of God says. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says that the tongue of the wise is health. In other words, the tongue of the wise speaks healing and health and wholeness to their body. You need to speak, proclaim the answer and not the problem. I said it this way before. You know, instead of telling God about all the problems in life, tell the problems of your life uh, and tell them how big they are. Tell the problems in life how big your God is. God's grace is sufficient. Speak your healing, not your symptoms. Speak your healing, not your symptoms. Speak your healing, not your symptoms. <laughs> Speak the word of God. Not daily COVID numbers. <laughs> we don't deny the seriousness of COVID-19 with some, some people. You know, with the deaths and the illnesses. But we deny it's right to steal, kill, and destroy from us. So I'm not, I'm not one of those people that are denying anything's going on. Yes, there is something very serious. But there's a lot of other serious things in the earth today that have always been. But for some reason, the media has, has chose to piggyback onto COVID-19 and freak everybody out. Yeah, people are, are dying. People have suffered and are suffering. I've known several. And it's affected different people differently. And, and the ones that it's affected seriously, it seems like, and even the reports back this up, that they, they've had an outline uh, health condition to begin with. And we pray for those folks. We stand in agreement with them. We speak the word of God to them and, and help them, you know, along with their faith, along with their confession of the word of God instead of just, just, just being buried in, in the, the condition they're in or the symptoms they're, they're dealing with. Jesus said, remember Jesus? John chapter 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The Amplified says that they would have life to the full till it overflows. COVID-19 is a work of the devil. We need to stand on the word in opposition to it. We walk in wisdom. Faith walks in wisdom. Faith doesn't deny things that are happening. But we walk in wisdom, and we don't tempt God. You know, if we have symptoms, stay home. You know, don't be stupid and say, well, I'm just walking by faith. No, you're, you're walking by stupidity, and you're walking and, and putting other people potentially at harm. No, if you got symptoms, stay home. Speak the word of God to them symptoms and over them symptoms. Praise the Lord. We stand on the word in opposition to it. Walk in wisdom. You know, Jesus even said, you don't tempt the Lord God. You know, when the enemy tried to get him to jump off the side of a hill. No, we don't tempt God. I mean, if you got something that you need to go to the doctor for, go to the doctor, believe in God that the hands of the doctors and the nurses that'll be treating you, they're the hands of Jesus. Amen. And they're operating in the wisdom of God. Glory to God. But don't let your life stop because of the, the, the wicked, and they are wicked, reports that are coming at you daily. Stand against them. Speak the word of God. Contrary to them, reports. Remember, the victory is yours. And we pray for those that are affected. Amen. We speak healing, wholeness, and health right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We proclaim wellness. We proclaim wholeness in Jesus' name, the name that's above every name. And whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Let me read the lyrics to that song one more time in closing. And that's the name of the song, Whose Report Shall You Believe? The, the lyric goes like this. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. 
His report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says I am free. His report says victory. It's time for us to start walking in victory and not stop walking in victory, no matter what the devil throws at us. The Bible says that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And we've got the word, the same, Jesus is the word. So we stand upon his word and destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Then the other lyric says, are you healed? Yes. Are you filled? Yes. Have you got the victory? Yes, I've got the victory. Praise God. Let that be your confession of faith and then walk in it in the name of Jesus. Just want to remind you that uh, if, this Sunday, uh, our church service is at 10 o'clock if you're in the area, uh, starting at 10 o'clock. However, our live stream doesn't start until 1030. Uh, this Sunday, we've got a, a guest minister who's been with us many, many times, John George. Uh, so be sure to come out and, and uh, hear the uncompromised word of God. And then also for you guys. Saturday, we have got John George with us for a men's get-together in the evening at 6 o'clock. And uh, Tim Gallagher has been so gracious to uh, open up his, his garage. Uh, our tradition had always been to meet out at my dad's place, and he had his garage all cleaned out and, and, and set up for us. But, of course, they've moved to Oklahoma, and so it would be difficult to get us all down there at his garage at this time. So, so, so Tim has graciously uh, um, invited us over there. Uh, just get a hold of us for the address. And uh, we've got some uh, pork butt that's going to be smoked for us. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, if you're coming out, just bring something with you, you know, uh, either a side, you know, or potato chips, beans, whatever. And uh, let's have a good time of fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. And God bless you. And you've got the victory in Jesus' name. Amen.